Good morning. Welcome back to RC Model Reviews. The light is terrible. It's raining outside. It's we've just had a tropical cyclone or an extropical cyclone come through, so this video quality is probably going to be really crap. Anyway, what have I got on the build table today for Fixed Wing Friday? I've got again the Hobby King, what is it, mini stick, ugly stick thing that I reviewed nearly four years ago. I think I reviewed this thing, and it's been a great little plane. Um, I originally reviewed it with the Cox 010 motor on it, tiny, the world's smallest internal combustion engine ever mass produced. And I'm going to change that engine to a Cox 020 with a throttle sleeve, which is, you know, kind of cool because then we'll actually have throttle control. The little Cox motors don't usually have throttles, but you can get them. And I did pick one up on eBay with a throttle sleeve. So hopefully it'll be mean I can do low passes and, and, and touch and go, well, not touch and goes, there's no wheels on this thing, but I can fly it like a much larger model. And what's the benefit? Well, why would you have a little model like this running on nitro when you can get yourself a nice big model running on electric? Why would you go this way? Well, with the regulations changing all over the world now, there seems to be a common theme amongst all the different countries' regulators. They think that if it's under 250 grams, then it doesn't need to be regulated nearly so much as if it weighs more than 250 grams. It's in the USA, it's in Australia, I think, it's in Canada. Many of these countries are saying under 250 grams, yeah, we don't care too much because it's not really dangerous. And it's very true. Something like this, which weighs, let's weigh it. I did weigh it. I have been flying it with a Cox 020, which is bigger than the original 010. So originally it was about 102 grams, but with the 020, it'll be a bit heavier. Let's put it on the scales and find out. The scales that don't show the blood. And it says 115. This weighs 115 grams. So it's a little bit heavier than it was, but that's less than half the the, the cutoff point and because it's made of balsa wood and film and it's so light it really doesn't pose a danger to anyone it's it's frangible and it has very low mass and it doesn't actually fly that fast so it is a safe safe model but what I'm getting at here is that I'm going to be doing a series of videos on building models that fly under the regulations models you can fly with that and to worry about registering them and 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 all the other crazy rules that seem to be coming like in Canada, you can't fly within 75 meters of any other person or a building or an animal or uh, a car, etc. Whatever etc means. Just so you can't fly within 75 meters of anything because anything could be etc. Uh, so we're going to get around these crazy regulations somehow. And the best way I can see to do it is to build a small lightweight plane. And the regulations do not apply, although common sense obviously still does. So this is going to be the first of my sub 250 gram projects and I'm converting it from a simple bank and yank two channel model with a fixed throttle glow, well, no throttle glow motor to one with a throttle on it. Now I might put the undercarriage back on so we can do all the things you do with bigger aircraft, bigger models. And why would you make nitro and not electric? Well, this is why. In that bottle is enough for an entire day's flying. Um, Unlike an electric model, you don't have to keep recharging the battery between flights. These little nitro motors, you just keep filling them up with fuel, start them up and throw it. It's simple as that. So you can get an awful lot of um, milliamp hours into a bottle like this, and it gives you a huge amount of fun on a day. You go out with your bottle of fuel, with your plane, with your transmitter, with your glow starter battery, and away you go. Just fly until you drop. Simple as that. So this is just going to show you that even with nitro, you can have a hell of a lot of fun and stay under the rules and avoid all the hassles and the regulation that otherwise apply. So I've got a couple of other sub 250 gram fixed wing projects and, uh, and planned. One of them, of course, is if you, now that was the plug and fly. I'll put a link to the review of that model in the description of this one so you can go and see the review. But if you want to be a bit more adventurous, there's this. What's this? This is the uh, what do they call it? The Micro Stick Version 2 from Radical RC. This is not a Chinese product. This is an American product made in the good old US of A by Dave Thacker from Radical RC. And if you don't know who Dave Thacker is, you haven't been in the hobby very long. Dave is a, uh, you know, he's a dyed-in-the-wool RC modeler. And this is a balsa kit. Look, look at this. This is real wood and it's been laser cut very, very well, actually. It's very, very fine laser cutting and it goes right through it. It's a lovely piece of kitting. Um, comes with a plan, comes with the instructions, comes with little bits of plywood and things. It is a great way to build your own model. Now, I know that the Hobby King one here, this is available in a plan and kit form, but the, the kit is nowhere near, nowhere near as good as this, trust me. So if you want to build something from scratch, well, not scratch, but from a kit, and enjoy all the, the wonderful time that you spend gluing bits of wood together and, and flying something that you've actually constructed with your own hands, then this is probably going to be a pretty good 
option. I'm going to build this. I'll do a build video for this. This will be uh, supplementary to the other stuff we do. I will build this, show you how what's involved in putting one of these stick and film models together because a lot of people haven't done it these days. A lot of people in the hobby now, all I've ever done is bought ARF or RTF foam models. They don't know the pleasure you can get from actually building something with your own hands, which goes beyond just gluing a couple of bits of foam together. I'll show you what it's like, because when I did my retro videos on the, uh, the old radio gear I had, uh, a lot of people said, wow, I would like to see more retro stuff, more retro stuff. That was on my XJet channel. I'll put a link to those in the description as well if you want to see those. Uh, they wanted to see some retro stuff. You know, what was it like when, you, when I was young and, these, and many of the people flying today weren't even born? Well, this is kind of a step back in time. This is like the models we used to build and the way we used to build them 30, 40, 50 years ago. And it's a great experience. Everyone should at least build one model like this in their lifetime, just so you know what's involved. It'll give you a better appreciation for the, for the wonders of cheap Chinese ARFs, because this isn't a quick build. You know, you can buy something like an AXN or something, and you can throw it together, or an FMS Super Easy Trainer, 15 minutes, and it's ready to fly. This will take several days to build. And that's great in, in the winter or in the evenings. It's a wonderful pastime. Cutting, you know, pulling these bits of bolster out, lining them up on the plan, pinning it together, a bit of CA, it's wonderful fun. So you might want to give that a try. It's only $27, $27, pretty cheap. Um, now Dave sent this in to me <laughs> quite a while ago now, probably hmm, years ago, and it sat on the shelf because I'm not really a builder. I'm more of a flyer. But I thought, well, I'll show you people what's involved in doing a build like this because it seems to be the way people uh, well, there's certainly some people are very interested in this. So there you go. Um, there'll be, as I say, there'll be more sub-250 gram fixed wing stuff coming up. Be some bigger stuff as well. But I wanted to sort of announce that this will be the, a, a little bit of a theme uh, on some of the videos is flying under the regulations. It's easy to do with multi-rotors. You can pick up like that um, Emacs baby hook, 85 grams. You can buy it, 100 bucks. Ping, you're in the air. Simple as that. Um, but fixed wing is also something that we can really enjoy with these lower weight limits. And you get a much bigger model for the same amount of weight. DLGs, you can get a one meter DLG that's under 250 grams, and that's a lot of fun. And as I say, this thing is, I don't know what the span of this is, but this is a 17 inch model, the, the Radical RC one's a 17 inch model. And this is, I don't know, it's probably something about the same. I have done, oh, here's, I've got a tape measure. How about that? Gosh, finally, for once, I am prepared. Here we go, let's have a look at the span of this thing. This is, well, this is actually a 23 inch model, tip to tip. So the radical one is smaller than this. And these are great because you can just throw them in the car, throw them in the truck, and if you find a place to fly, go and fly it. Brilliant. There you go. That's it. If you've got questions, comments, stay tuned. We will be, hopefully I'll be able to fly this tomorrow with the throttle Cox 020 in it. And the first review, first flight review, of course, was a bit of a bust because I had Barry on camera and you didn't get to see much of the model flying. Um, Barry cam is not the most stable, but hopefully tomorrow I'll have my hat cam on and we'll get some much better video of this model flying and you'll be able to see the fun that comes from flying tiny little sub 250 gram models, especially if they've got nitro motors. Comments, questions in the usual place. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.